Next up, though, I want to introduce our speaker. So I was chatting with Ron, uh, and um, I knew his name had come up before, and he's given a talk here in the past, like at the past at Thunder Plains, which is awesome. We love, we love getting our, our speakers that come back and everything. And Ron's from DFW as well, so Dal you know, the Dallas area. So that's not, you know, that's, that's dedication. It's not like a short trip like me. I live 20 minutes away. It's a little bit more than that. Um, and I was talking with Ron, just has some, some awesome background, um, manager, working at 7-Eleven right now, does a lot with IoT side of things, has got, you know, Microsoft background with being a Microsoft MVP. So just, I'm, I'm super stoked for this because it's just going to be an awesome talk. So let me get the script side of it there. Meet Ron Dagdag, a seasoned software engineering leader with over 20 years of industry experience, currently managing R&D engineering teams at 7-Eleven. Ron is not just a professional powerhouse, he's an active member of the tech community, recognized as a Microsoft MVP in AI, mixed reality, probably hence the talk here, and IoT. He's also been a speaker at a few Techlahoma events before, which is awesome that we get outside of Oklahoma like that. In his session, Ron will guide you through the fascinating world of mixed reality features available on the web through WebXR, learn how to leverage the power of JavaScript and web skills to craft engaging mixed reality experiences, Ron will also introduce popular open source AR, VR, JavaScript libraries to kickstart your exploration. Everybody, let's give Ron a big round of applause. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? I'm good. good, good. How's the conference so far? Been good? Lots of good information that I learned today. It's pretty good. Today, I'm going to be talking about mixed reality for JavaScript tech. Um, and my name is Ron Dagdag. I am an R&D manager, engineering manager at 7-Eleven. You know the Slurpee stuff? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, before I start, I wanted to ask, are there any mixed reality developers here or have been working with mixed reality? Oh, we got a few people. That's good. We got two people in. Thank you very much. Anyone work with virtual reality, augmented reality? Yeah, same people. And hopefully I got more hands doing... Any JavaScript developers here, Woo right? Woohoo! Yes, yes. And have any one of you played with the new Oculus? Uh, or we don't call it Oculus anymore. <laughs> it's a Meta, a Meta Quest 3. It's coming out. So, so that's good. And in between my presentation, I'm going to be talking about... Anyone familiar with this? This thing I've played with in the past before. I still have trouble solving it, but anyway. It's fine. It's, it was originally called the Magic Cube. I think I like Rubik's Cube better than Magic Cube. It's nothing magical about this, but it... Okay. <laughs> All right. Our agenda today, we're going to talk about what is mixed reality, what is WebXR, and then talks about the different uh, virtual reality experiences and augmented reality experiences out there. And then... Well, how do you get started with open source JavaScript libraries that are available for you? Okay, uh, if you want to get the link to my demos, uh, feel free. This is on my GitHub, uh, and you can you can test out uh, my my presentation too. You can scan that, and I'll show that again later on. Or if the, the slides is also uh, there too. Okay, uh, key takeaways. I wanted to talk about the key takeaways because I I believe. If people are interested in it, they'll stay in. If they're not interested, it doesn't bother me. Uh, and what is mixed reality? It's a blend of physical and digital world. And what is WebXR? It's the mixed reality using the browsers. Right? Um, what, type, what are different types of virtual reality experiences out there? There's what we call non-immersive, semi-immersive, fully immersive, and social VR. Uh, Marker-based for augmented reality experiences, there's marker-based, markerless, uh, location, and we'll talk more about this. And what are the open source JavaScript libraries that I'm going to be talking about today, uh, which is the model viewer, A-frame, MindAR, Babylon, 3JS, those kind of things. Okay. Mixed reality. And mixed reality is a blend of physical and digital worlds. And you know, looking at this diagram, there's humans. Hopefully, I'm talking to a lot of humans right now over here in our audience. And then we have computers. We have computers representation here, too. We have some laptops. And then we have the environment, which is where we live in. And all these different things working together to build that mixed reality experience. Typically, we call human and computer interaction, right? All the UX that we've been talking about, just a few uh, 
sessions ago, right? The previous session talked about the human and computer interaction, OOUX, right? And then there's the human and the environment where we talk about the conventional reality, how we interact with objects around us. And computer and then environment, you, usually robotics have a way to do, you know, to understand its environment. That's what you call, you know, perception. And then all this is possible working together with human, computer, and environment, and that's what we call mixed reality. So mixed reality is possible because of the advancement, not just in computer vision. Also, our computers are more powerful now in terms of graphics processing, the display technologies, input system, uh, and cloud computing. It, a lot of com computing have a way to understand environmental uh, like spatial mapping and anchors, being able to also do hand tracking, eye tracking, and speech input. Uh, there's also spatial sounds. If you're a gamer, there's a lot of, you know, the, the whole experience itself because uh, of spatial sound. Um, there's location positioning to, you know, to identify where you are in the world. And then, of course, the tools and AI that's helping us to build all these 3D assets uh, in mixed reality spaces. So mixed reality is, is the you know, combination of augmented reality, virtuality. So the left side, you have reality. The right side, you have virtuality, meaning all digital. And then augmented reality and augmented virtuality kind of mix those together, right? Uh, where you have uh, some virtual objects into the real world using computing. So what are the different types of virtual reality? Every time I go to like uh, arcade games, there's always gonna be those virtual reality experience. You've seen that, right? most likely. Yeah. And non-immersive VR, you call that video games, right? We have that, you know, a lot of people play video games and you know, especially Roblox. My kid really likes playing Roblox and there's that virtual world where they can interact with each other through those video games, right? And the semi-immersive one would be something like the 360 virtual tour. I don't know if you've experienced that. YouTube has a way to have a VR experience to where you can kind of see like, you know, it's riding an airplane or riding, you know, and you can kind of three, do a 360 capture of, you know, especially nowadays when you, trying to buy a house, before you even go to that house, you look at this 3D uh, virtual tour and you can actually uh, see a semi-immersive VR. A fully immersive VR, of course, one of the uh, meta quest, and one of these is actually, this is a mixed reality device. You can do VR, virtual reality, where you can do 360 tour or you can actually, you know, it's something that blocks the world, yeah? you can. And so a lot of the different games out there uh, that is uh, applicable into a VR device, you can actually play it on a fully immersive VR. And nowadays, you know, with all these connecting to the internet, and there's the social VR where it's becoming more and more collaborative in order to uh, have the experience, right? Uh, I don't know if you've seen one uh, where, you know, you have, you, you can, play with your friends, you know, not just video games, but also have, uh, you know, you can build arts around this, you know, as a collaborative experience. Has anyone done that before? Uh, where, you, where you can play together in social VR or have, have worked with that? Yeah, we have a few people that have experienced that. And it's a different one because it's, you know, it doesn't have to be in the same, same location, but it's, it's a fun experience and it's different. Uh, augmented reality, you have the marker-based AR, where it's using a marker or a QR code. And then based from that QR code, you display a virtual content. Uh, and I'll do a demo with that later on. And there's markerless VR, where it looks at what is around you and try to understand the surfaces. And then based from that, you don't need a marker. It, it can have virtual, you know, virtual objects on top of that. And then you have your location-based AR, uh, which is 
uh, if you think about a Pokemon Go, you know, that craze where you can go to a certain location, you can, you can capture a Pokemon. So that is a location-based AR. And there's projection-based AR too, where they're using projectors in order to have virtual spaces or be able to display something and then interact on the screen. Um, and then there's super imp imposition, superimposition based AR, uh, where you think about this, you know, you are in a uh, you know, construction site and you can wear a HoloLens or a virtual device that can give you some information about what's happening in the construction site or visualize the status of what's going on. Or maybe you're in a uh, factory and identifies the machines and the machine itself kind of gives you those information through the virtual means. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of these experiences, you know, not just AR and VR, we just don't call them AR and VR anymore. We call them the games or you call them the different experiences what it is, right? You go to, there's different areas where you, you know, where you can actually uh, experience this and you go to certain places now where you can experience a virtual reality experience or an AR reality experience that is already in the real world, meaning it's, it's here. It's not like it's something new, it's something that we are experiencing and we're, we, have that cap we have that capability now to, in order to do this. And in order to get started, um, I'll talk more about what is web, web XR as a web developer. But going back to one of these things, uh, there are about 43 quintillion possible combinations of this uh, and of course, one solution, right? Is that amazing how the Rubik's Cube is able to puzzle us throughout all these years? Okay, WebXR. WebXR is a unified API for VR and AR devices. A lot of these VR headsets and AR, you know, this one, we know the mobile app has a, has browsers, right? Actually, Meta Quest, they also have their own browsers inside. They have a meta, a meta browser that you can actually use to be able to look at websites and use. Uh, HoloLens also has a way to be able to have Edge browser inside the HoloLens. Um, if you want to get started with XR, WebXR and want to learn more, immersiveweb.dev is a good place to start. iOS support, unfortunately, it's still experimental. Uh, so, if you're going to do it in iOS, hopefully you'll get through with the Apple Vision OS. It's, WebXR is going to be su supported with the Apple Vision OS, which is the headset that Apple is building um, and releasing, I don't know when, but hopefully we get, we get it soon. Okay, what is the advantage? Why we want to do web and do you know, mixed reality, XR is mixed, right? AR, VR, mixed reality in web. Why web XR? One is because it's an open platform. Uh, it's permissionless publishing, meaning, you know, these days whenever you, know, you have to go build an app on the phone or, you know, a game, you have to go through the app store. This one does not allow, you don't need to go to the app store. You don't need permission to publish your site, right? And then you can just send the link to someone, publish it, and then you can share it, and they can get that, that experience. And also, it's accessible. There are more JavaScript developers than C Sharp or Unity or you know, uh, all these low-level uh, languages, too. So it's low barrier of entry. And a lot of us here uh, did learn uh, JavaScript because it's so easy for us to learn. You know, we don't have to buy any software in order to learn the language itself. And then, of course, it's cross-platform. I put just works because we all know, as web developers, it doesn't always just works on all the browsers, right? <laughs> and all the ones that throughout the years, yeah, it got better, but always, whenever there's new technology, just works is, doesn't always just works. Okay, and of course there is, uh, what is the difference between WebXR and OpenXR? 
Uh, WebXR they're, and OpenXR, they both are abstraction of the display and the input on these devices, meaning instead of going to lower level, trying to display it in the two screens that you have in one of these, right? It has that level of abstraction. Of course, you have the controllers that goes with uh, some of these devices, and it's an abstraction in that. And then there's the website uh, for WebXR, it's specifically for web, you know, meaning you, you create a, an, a web app. For an OpenXR, you have to install an app, or you, you create an app on top of that. Uh, so the good thing about WebXR is it's the same app. Once you publish it, if you can run it on, you know, then you're on one of the Android phones, or you can do it on Meta, it's supposed to be the same site that you can, uh, that you can run it. Um, unlike OpenXR, uh, you have to have an app, you have to compile the app to run on each one of the OS. So that's the main difference between, between those two. Okay, going back to one of these again. Uh, the world record got broken uh, this year, or a few months ago actually. Max Park breaks the three by three Rubik's Cube world record in just three seconds. I don't know, I don't know how he did it, but it was, it was amazing. And notice the face of that guy that was, that was uh, timing it, it was, it's amazing. Anyway, <laughs> but it is a thing. It's, there's, there's a world record and it's, every year, a lot of people are trying to, to break this. Okay, going back to the JavaScript libraries that are available. Uh, out there today, if I have a lot of time, I can talk about uh, different areas here. There's the model, viewer, A-frame, MindAR, BabylonJS, Coconut, XR, 3JS. Talk a little bit about MediaPipe. There's also other ones for if you're a React developer, the Play Canvas, and then the SnapLens Studio. I may not be able to talk you know, in detail in a lot of them, but I'll do some uh, as much as I can. So model viewer, if you want to get started and just want to have a 3D model into your, you know, to, to your website and be able to display it in AR, uh, it's just a custom HTML element. Uh, you can go to modelviewer.dev. You know, oh, okay. I'll make sure it shows here. Here you go. So I should not move. Hopefully it shows up again. Kind of tricky. Can you see it? Okay, let's try again. No input. There you go. You have the mag magic touch, sir. <laughs> okay. So you're able to you know, have a custom tag that says model viewer on HTML. GLB, which is the file format that you can use in order to, to be able to display your 3D model. So with few lines of code, you'll be able to do something like this, right? So, so that's a good example of model viewer. So going back here, I'm gonna show you running it on my application. Okay, this is, this is my phone, right? And for model viewer, so notice how I have this Rubik's Cube over here, you see it? And I can click this view in your space, see it? And I can minimize this, oh, I think I dropped it. There you go, make it bigger. So notice how I can have a, an augmented reality experience in a few lines of code and be able to showcase that on the website, right? Cool, isn't it, right? Yeah, yeah, you just pinch and zoom and all that. That's a good experience. So if you have something, a 3D asset that you wanna display, that would be a good experience, right? So the most expensive Rubik's Cube out there yeah, costs about $2.5 million. This is back in 1995. I don't know how much it costs now, but because of the, I think, 15th anniversary of the thing, and it's a playable one. Uh, I just don't know, uh, you know 
but it has rubies and it has uh, anyway, diamonds and all that. Okay, A-frame, uh, which is another one. Actually, back in 2017, I did talk, I, I looked at the website and I looked at, back in 2017, I did talk about A-frame at this conference too. And uh, this is a good example of it. Um, it's a web framework for 3D AR and VR experiences. So it's HTML page, you create your scripts. And in this case, you have a box, sphere, and cylinder. And then the rotation, radius, you know, just looks like HTML stuff, right? Uh, then you have to change the sky, and then, which is your background color. And then pretty much the whole script and a few lines of code, you'll have something like this that you can navigate on your phone and be able to access it in the AR and VR. Isn't that cool, right? So it has that capability to, to simplify that. And the good thing about A-Frame is it's extensible. You can actually have uh, more capabilities that you can add with this. But to start with, you can, you can work on that. OK, let me do a demo on this one before I do that. Here's another one on A-Frame, which is about the same. Let's see if I can show you that one. Here's my phone again. Notice how this is a 360 uh, video on my or image, and there's the Rubik's Cube there, and I can click on the bottom, the AR, and now I, I have that, the same box, right? But So in few lines of code, you can also, if you're looking at it in a VR mode, you can, you can wear it, and then you can see that same experience. And it, you know, if I move my hand, you have a 360. Uh-huh. Is it aware that the stage is a circle? Yes, it okay. is it is aware of, of that. Okay. Going back. Okay, someone actually solved the Rubik's Cube but while skydiving. <laughs> it took him more than three seconds though, thirty seconds in order to finish that. <laughs> okay, Mind AR. Mind AR is another web augmented reality library. It has some image tracking and face tracking. It is on GitHub uh, to, l to learn more about it. But the good thing about this is actually on top of A-Frame uh, to add more capabilities on the AR side. So you can use it to where it can have an image target. So it looks for a certain image, kind of like a QR code or an image, and then it can put something on top of that image. So it's HTML with a little bit of um, you know, set, settings. So I wanted to, to demo that. Um, same app. Okay. Same thing. Hopefully my phone unlocks. Okay. So this time I'm going to do Mind AR. Of course that's small now. I don't know why. Okay. This one is looking for a uh, cube. Hopefully I can show you guys what it looks like. Where is my phone now? So notice how hopefully, oh, okay. I might have to resize it a little bit. I don't know what my window is. It's like that. Okay, notice how it's overlaying on top of that image that is on the right side. So you can actually make it kind of like a QR code and then be able to surface something on top of that image. Okay. So there's Picturize Studio that looks something like this where you can create experiences that looks like this, where you can, it has the image tracking, and you can play a YouTube video, you know, on a card and those kind of things. The cool thing is, it's, it's a link, and then you just share that link and be able to have that experience, right? They don't have to install anything on their uh, phone. 
Okay, the largest Rubik's Cube. <laughs> so this is 1.57 meters tall. Uh, I don't know, he almost got killed there. But <laughs> it looks like he's fine. But that's the biggest, uh, the largest Rubik's Cube. All right, Babylon JS is another one, which is this one is more. We're moving towards a 3D game engine, and if you're a TypeScript fan, this is uh, you know it has TypeScript support, it has support out of the box, included gaze, teleportation, AR experience. So it has more capabilities, um, animations. It is you know, fast and flexible. It, it supports 3D. Um, Lighting, shadows, physical simulations, collision. You know, there's a lot of features that you can do with this. You know, not just support Android point, phones, uh, HoloLens, Quest, and all that too. So this one, they have they have a playground, playground.babylon.js to start experimenting on this. Uh, but it looks different because now you have to set up the scene, and then you have to set up the camera. So you're kind of like a director. And then you're setting up, okay, what do I need to have on that scene, right? This one is uh, having a 360 image that we're trying to display. And then, you know, some of the messages there to make it an XR uh, capable. So Babylon JS is, a, uh, is flexible at 3D graphics, but it's more uh, that it can also do XR. So in this case, I'm using uh, this one, uh, where I can have a 360 image of it, and then I can move it. But this one, I'm using a browser in order to control, so I don't have to wear this headset too many times. I can use the browser to be able to have a virtual headset, and then I can see what it, what the you know what can be experienced. Anyone heard of Nike by You shoes? Actually, that one is built on top of Babylon JS, where you can customize a shoe and then order it. So there's, so it's being used in the real world in order to do some customizations and all that. Okay, Coconut XR is another one. If you are a React developer, uh, this is a good way. It, it, it's just recently released. Uh, it is open source also, it's on GitHub, um, but it's, you know, it's using React and 3.js and React 3 Fiber. React 3 Fiber is something that you can use to create, you know, 3D graphics into, um, into React. And then uh, they have this library, I don't know how to say it, Koshlish and Naturelish. Uh, and Coconut XR is easier to say. But what you can use it for is that it has these components if you want to be able to do interaction. Like in this case, you want to be able to have a 3D model and be able to grab it and do some interaction with it. So here's, a, here's an example of it. So this one I recorded this morning when I was setting it up over there. So notice how it's in the browser. I'm using the, you know, the Quest and I can grab the, an item and then move it around. So in few lines of code, you can build that experience and it's, it's HTML and JavaScript and it's using React. Cool. Another one is 3.js. Uh, it's an open source cross, cross browser libraries. And, and has anyone used 3.js here or mostly? Yeah, we got a few people that use 3.js. Um, you can display animated computer graphics. Now it also has WebXR, so if you need to interact or add WebXR to it, there's a way to do that. And um, there's a lot of examples out there to get, to get you started, but you can build experiences that's something that looks like that. You have more shaders, you have more capabilities. So what I'm trying to show you is like, if you really wanna go deeper into the, a lot of the different experiences on VR and AR, you know, and if you need to build games, I would suggest you know, 3JS would be a, a good way to start. So you can build some, some items like these. 
And there is a tutorial uh, on Google, uh, developers.google.com, if you want to build something uh, to get you started. So I wanted to do a quick demo on what that looks like. Okay. Another one. So this one we're doing, um, we did, I guess I didn't demo the Babylon JS. Hopefully it's, it'll showcase now. Okay. So this one. Okay. Might be a while. It's losing its tracking. Where, where'd you go? Yeah, let's see. Sometimes that takes a while. This one is using Babylon JS for the same item. So you can did drop it there. So now I can I can do some interaction. Okay. Of course live demos sometimes that doesn't cooperate. Uh, but let's let's move on. Uh, let's do it in 3JS. So there's 3JS where I can have an experience there. Notice how it's in front of me. I can move back and I can I can look at it. It stays where it's at. So once you place them. Cool. So that is another one. Oh, okay. The the most complex Rubik's Cube is 33 by 33 by 33. Uh, and that's how they know it's playable. Is the hashtag there or the hash function? Uh, that's how they would know. Okay. Uh, if you want to do, this is not WebXR, but MediaPipe is also another uh, cross-platform multi-device apps. So it's not just, you know, it's, it's also open source. If you need face mesh, face detection, hands, objectron, posts, and selfie segmentation, these are good tools that you can start using. It looks something like this if you wanted to, to build applications that can identify face mesh. Uh, Play Canvas, this one is more of a, you know, if you want to build games, playable ads, uh, Play Canvas is something that you might be able to uh, get started. So you can have like a 2D, 3D game that looks like that. So let's see if I can demo this. Um, and there's another one that I want to talk about, which is also going back to A-Frame, but this is more talking about the entity component system where uh, you can create these extensible items uh, to be able to build functionalities on top of these. Um, so in this case, I have a, you know, a scene, an asset, but I also have this JavaScript library that can uh, give me capabilities in, in order to um, have these, you know, different items, and I'll, I'll demo this a little bit more, okay? Let's see if I can do that on this phone. Okay. All right. So this one, we'll, we'll do Play Canvas. I did talk about Play, play Canvas. So notice how I have my 3D, I can press left click, right click. I have a way to do it in AR. And notice I can, I can rotate that. And then it's using JavaScript also in order to build this, uh, this experience. Okay, and then last one that I wanted to demo is this. Um, notice how it's in the browser, click AR. So notice how you can have that experience. And then as you move closer, it will open up. And then you can have a 360 you know, degree uh, as you. And this one works on both this and also on this one, right? So it's a different experience. And it would close up. So, so interesting stuff, right? So this is 
this is an example of what it would look like. You know, you, you go in. So it's mixed reality because it's not just, you know, augmented reality where you can see, you go in, and then now, you know, now you can, you can view, uh, you know, like you're hoarded in portal. Yeah. And then you can move out of it. Yes. Same scene or a yeah, the same scene is inside that globe, so it's it. it's a way to to do that. Uh, in order to help debug this, it helps to have some tools. There's Chromium tools out there. Meta just released a, Cro a Chromium tool called Immersive Web Emulator, where you can actually have controls over, you know, uh, when you want to be able to kind of see what it looks like. So in this case, I moved in. And back out, then I can, I can test this without wearing the headset all the time. And this link, if you want to learn more about WebXR development, there's a lot of information on this one. Um, so I recommend uh, looking at that list. There's also, if you have Quest, this is interesting because uh, Quest, of course, has this, this uh, Pass through where you can actually see everything behind you, right? But it also can identify surfaces so you can actually play this game in order to um, have this experience. So it's a game that you can just go to this spatial fusion.io, it would load everything you need inside Quest. Okay, of course. Robots have solved this Rubik's Cube under one second. It's actually 0.637 seconds, or, yeah, 0.637 seconds is able to solve the Rubik's Cube. Okay. So in summary, what is mixed reality? It's a blend of physical and digital worlds. They talk about the WebXR, mixed reality for web browsers, and then the model viewer, a-Frame, MindAR, BabylonJS, CoconutXR, and 3JS. And here's the link again if you need my the, the presentation, learn more about my presentation. And if you want to learn more about, is, is people still taking pictures of that? Okay. All right. About me, if you want to learn more, I don't know if you've noticed this one right here. Actually, that's from Snap. Um, there's Snapchat build a uh, lens that you can actually have these augmented reality experiences too, and it's able to to try it out. It's interesting because you know web developers, in order to do um, those Snap lenses, you know you, you can use JavaScript too to to do that. Um, my name is Ron Dagdag. The best per place to contact me is through LinkedIn, or uh, that's not Twitter anymore, X, at Ron Dagdag. And thanks for geeking out with me about mixed reality, WebXR, and Rubik's Cube. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm open for questions. All right, thanks so much, Ron. That was awesome. Uh, in the spirit of events in this room, we're going to cut out the Q&A because there's a lunch out there, and I know everyone knows that. Uh, so I want to get us there as fast as possible. So if you do have questions for Ron, ask him. And you, like he mentioned, LinkedIn and Twitter, X. Um, I do, however, want to give a very quick pitch to our lunch sponsor because they paid for the lunch, and that is of ash and fire. Um, I normally would have a slide, but I'm making this quicker so we can get our food. But uh, of Ash and Fire is a, is a dev studio locally that is run by Daniel Ashcraft. He's actually the current president of Teklahoma. So that's awesome. He's here as well today. Uh, if you know him, recognize him, go say hi, say thanks for you know, the food, because it's pretty awesome. If you don't, um, you know, ask someone who he is, and you, know, you get to know a new person there. But uh, founded by Daniel Ashcraft, Teklahoma's current president in 2018, of Ash and Fire is an esteemed software mobile and web development company based in the heart of Oklahoma City, where we are at. Our impact extends across the United, the entire United States. That's it. All right, go get your food, everybody. Give one last round of applause for Ron.